Number 1. Dad and Son School the Cops August 24, 2022, activist and photojournalist Jason Gutterman, along with his son, Benjamin Gutterman, decided to conduct a First Amendment audit while traveling the town of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Jason decided to do an audit on a state-owned liquor store by filming the store and the parking lot of the store. After receiving multiple complaints from customers, an employee asked Jason and his son to stop filming, which Jason denied, telling him that he was an investigative journalist. What I'm doing is, is I'm an investigative journalist and I'm working on a story. The employee, however, didn't take Jason's word for it and asked him to present his information or film from the parking lot, which Jason denied again. Don't show your credentials, we're gonna call the cops. You can call the The employee then threatened them with calling the police if they didn't comply. The employee didn't take Jason's words too seriously and went inside the store to call the police. After receiving the call, Officer Ashley Kayafa responded to the scene and asked the store's employee if he wanted to file a trespassing complaint, to which he answered yes. So you want to trespass? Yes. Okay. Without listening to Jason's part of the story, Officer Kayafa proceeded to ask him for his ID. Do you have ID on you? But the officer wasn't really interested in Jason's point of view on the matter and kept asking him for his ID. Officer Kayafa said that she needed Jason's ID in order to trespass him. But they want you trespass from their store? Jason, however, repeatedly denied her request, saying that he didn't commit any crime to be trespassed. Okay. You've been called supervisor, it's not the way okay. it works. I'm standing I, dude, out When her requests were met with denial, okay. have a look at how she tried to threaten Jason. Dude, I don't want you get, I don't want to get arrested for disorderly or anything. Point to be noted here, it was not their store as Officer Kayafa called it. It was a state-owned store, which means it was a public place and Jason was filming the scene by standing way far from the store's door. But as it seemed, the officer didn't have much time to listen to Jason's point of view about the complaint and called backup. She even called the store a private property. It's not a private property, it's owned by the state. But no matter how much Officer Kayafa tried to sound intelligent and all-knowing, Jason got her stuck at one point while she was making circles to cover up a loophole in her earlier statement. If you're giving me a threat of arrest and you want my ID... I need to identify you, yes. So under threat of arrest, are you... I just need your ID. I'm well, not if you're not gonna, if you're not threatening arrest, then I'm not gonna give you my ID. If you're telling me you're gonna arrest me if I don't give it to you, I'll I give said... it to you under duress. It is scary to think about it. An officer who is trained and supposed to know better gave up arguing with a citizen just because she couldn't come up with a reasonable explanation for her claims. But Officer Kayafa wasn't the only one acting unreasonably. After a while, Officer Ziegler arrived at the location as backup for Officer Kayafa, who turned out to be way more unreasonable and aggressive than his colleague. So listen, they want you trespassing. Right? I just gave him my ID. Inventing his own law, the officer warned Jason that if he didn't provide his ID, he would be arrested. So if I don't give you my you ID, I will be arrested. You will. Now, let's have a look at what the Idaho law has to say about the matter. Unlike most states, there is no stop and identify law in Idaho that requires individuals to identify themselves to police officers. But as it seemed, the officer didn't know this and continuously tried to cover up his ignorance. His employees were right in complaining about him since he was disrupting the business. Oh, I understand. The business, right? You don't know who I am. This is not a business. This is a but was he really being disruptive? If we have a close look at the footage, there was no disruption going on. Jason and Benjamin were standing far away from the entrance of the business and weren't causing any problems that might have affected the store's business. After being wrongly accused of disruption, Jason made a swift reply. Only if I'm violating the law. I was not being disruptive. I was standing 20, 30 feet away from the doorway. Although Officer Ziegler had arrived to solve things, he instead escalated them and caused a new debate to be started. Well, Jason had decided to teach him a lesson. You cannot trespass someone from public property when they have committed no crime. That's the way that works. You're going to learn the law today. You're making a mistake. After getting a solid lecture on law and a warning to be sued by Jason, Officer Ziegler tried to play it down by telling Jason that he didn't know what he was doing before arriving on the spot. Me for that. You fucked up. I'm sorry. That's a mistake and you're going to learn that today. The officer even said that he was backing his fellow officer's play with little information. Well, I'm going to back her play with very limited you can information, back, you right? Can back up her play with an apologetic tone, police officers said goodbye to Jason and Benjamin and flee the scene without even telling him that he was no longer being detained. Hey, are you releasing me from detainment or what are you doing? Clown! After the cops ran away, Jason and his son visited the Cord d'Alene's police headquarters to file a complaint against them. Although the lobby was closed, Jason succeeded in contacting Officer Kayafa's supervisor and told him about the whole incident. Yes, ma'am. 
and I'm interested in, I'd like to speak to a watch commander if possible. Although Jason knew the law, the officers yet tried to play with him. I wonder what they do to common people in their day-to-day -day operations. The officer's interaction with Jason screamed of ignorance and unprofessionalism. The very people being ignorant about the law, who are supposed to know it better, is perhaps the most dangerous thing to our justice system. No, it would be open to whoever I allow into my private business. Unfortunately, ignorant cops are not limited to Idaho only. In the next case, we will see a Flagler County Sheriff's deputy who tried to force the wrong law on a peaceful citizen. Number two, citizen teaches deputy a tough lesson. While a Flagler County resident was standing on a sidewalk, peacefully protesting against the local business, a deputy approached him and asked him to leave the place. Uh, are you videotaping license plates? Because the deputy believed that videotaping in a public place was against the law. Little did he know that the citizen he was dealing with knew his rights perfectly. Okay, if you come out here and you even tell me I can't record something from a public easement, I'm going to hold you liable under Chapter 21, Title 42, United States. After being taught some law, the deputy then tried to ask the citizen even more questions, but was denied, and rightly so. No, no more questions. I don't answer questions. As he was not breaking any law, the protester was in no way obliged to answer the cop's questions. But while it might seem simple to us, it wasn't that simple for the deputy. After all, his ego was hurt as he was denied an answer to his question. As the deputy continued engaging in debate with him, the citizen started asking for the presence of an attorney. I want an attorney present. Okay. I want an attorney present for any questions that you have. After all of his excuses failed, the officer then left the scene to consult with other deputies. In other words, he was trying to find another reason to detain the citizen. Well, as it was, the deputy wasn't very good at making excuses. He came back to the scene and asked the citizen to present his ID without any reasonable explanation. What crime do you suspect me of? No crime. Okay, so in Florida, if there is no crime, then I do not have to identify myself. Well, the man behind the camera knew his rights and proceeded to destroy the deputy's baseless excuses. Go fuck yourself. I'm not going to ID. What validated his refusal to give up his ID was the deputy's own comment saying that there was no crime being committed. According to Florida law, if an officer reasonably believes that a person is committing or is about to commit a crime, they can detain such a person not committed a crime you cannot articulate a crime you just said it but since the deputy said that there was no crime in this case there was no reason to drag things any longer however the deputy was just not willing to give up not only him but other deputies who were responding to the scene started acting unreasonably as well you guys want to play games i'm, I'm telling you right now i can pro say this you're going to lose your qualified immunity. I don't want to talk to you. Get the hell away from me. After being proven unreasonable and ignorant of the law, the cops decided that leaving the knowledgeable citizen alone would be a better decision. But while these cops let the peaceful citizen on his own, the next officers from New Mexico arrested the auditor who was filming while in a public place. Number three, auditor proves the police officers wrong. After an auditor named Albert Bastillos was conducting a First Amendment audit in Artesia, New Mexico, an employee of a nearby business approached him and asked him not to record the facility. Albert told him that he was in a public place and that he could record the facility while standing in a public place, which the employee was having a hard time understanding. Yeah, I can go on your property and take pictures. I'm on public property. He called the police on the auditor, and this is when the level of ignorance of two Artesia cops was uncovered. At first, Officer Sanchez responded to the call and asked the auditor to present his ID right off the bat, which the auditor denied as he had every right to do so. Can I see your ID? No, ma'am. If you think Officer Sanchez was acting wrong, wait till you see Officer David, who also responded to the employee's call. The auditor kept telling him that they had to commit a crime to hand over his ID, but the officer said that he was wrong. A crime to have give ID. No, sir. Yes, I do. No, sir. Yes, I do. Run it back. The cops were so sure and confident about their broken knowledge of the law that they handcuffed and arrested Albert for trespassing. After being released, Albert filed a lawsuit against the city of Artesia and Officer David Bailey. The judge ruled the suit in Albert's favor and called the arrest unlawful. Knowing your rights always helps in these situations. If you liked the video, please let me know in the comments below. Also, hit the subscribe button to watch more.